thick creatures are queefing all over the modern metagame. And it's time to plug up the queefs with Deflecting Palm, which redirects all damage that we dealt to us back at our opponent. And while our deck here looks like a typical Boros Burn deck, I've spent a lot of time tweaking it to perfection. A traditional Boros Burn deck runs 19 lands, and as a longtime Burn player, we're looking for a two land hand with creatures, settling for three lands but never four, and we'll keep one land hand as long as we have a Goblin Guide or a Monastery. With only 19 lands in the deck, there are a lot of times where we have to settle for a one land hand. And if we don't hit our second land soon, it is very unlikely that we'll win. That's the first issue. The second issue is Searing Blaze. It's arguably the best card in Burn because it deals up to six damage. Three to an opponent's creature, three to them, as long as we played a land that turn. But with only 19 lands in the deck, it is really hard to time Searing Blaze. So in the version that you see here, to address both the opening hand issue and the Searing Blaze issue, I've added a 20th land. But now the question becomes if the solution is that simple, why do traditional Boros Burn decks almost always run 19 lands? And that's because of Burn's trying to finish off the opponent, the last thing they want to hit is a land. So to make having 20 lands worth it, this version here is running for Sunbait Canyon. If we do happen to hit a lot of lands, we can sack the Sunbait Canyon to draw a card. But if Sunbait Canyon is so good, why do most burn decks only run two? And that is because if burn is up against an aggro deck, Sunbait Canyon is horrendous. Because every time we tap it for mana, we lose one life. And if the two lands in our opening hand happen to be both canyons, we be losing a lot of life. So how do we justify four of these knowing that we might lose a lot of life? And that ties back to Deflect Deflecting Palm. Deflecting Palm is essentially life gain. It's amazing if we use it against a big attacking creature, but let's just say, worst case scenario, we use it on our opponent's Lightning Bolt. In that situation, Deflecting Palm is deal three, gain three. And between three Deflecting Palms and four Lightning Helixes, against the aggro mirror, we can keep our life total very high. That's the deck in a nutshell. 20 lands, Sunbaked Canyon, and Deflecting Palm. But is Deflecting Palm main deck the direction that Boros Burn wants to go in? That's what we're hoping to find out by the end of this video by playing eight matches. Well, first, quickly look at the sideboard. We have Creature Hate, Creature Hate, Creature Hate, Hate, graveyard hate, life gain hate, artifact hate, control hate, and one extra deflecting palm. But now it's time for the gameplay. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already a big boy. But without further ado, here's the gameplay, and I hope you enjoy. Opening hand, two lands in hand, and a creature, so we're looking good, we'll keep. Oh, soul scar mage, this shall be quite the aggro battle. Little goblin guide will play it. Two, and we're off. Forked bolt, okay. Play a swing for two, but hold the bolt in hand. Well, let's we'll just play it safe and helix this hoe. Indeed, the hoe has been slain. Play lava spike, but then pass back. And then back on our turn, we know they have bolt in hand, but the aggro mirror usually comes down the creatures, so we'll try and jam these out, and we'll probably lose the Goblin Guide in the process. Manamorphos on top, so it's probably Mono Red Phoenix. Goblin Guide goes to Jesus, and then back to them. Manamorphos, Faithless Looting, Lava Dart, but no Phoenix, and they pass back. Land, nice. We'll suspend the Rift Bowl, and then hold the Helix. But what is these? They pass back? Do they have Skull Crack? They wouldn't. We'll try it. No Skull Crack, okay. And the Rift Bolt comes down. Goblin Guide, nice. Swing for two. Got shot. And then double Lava Spike, putting them down to three. Back to them. Oh, and they quickly pass back. Get ready to be queefed on. Lava Dart twice. Gut shot, sure. With two Lava Darts in Graveyard, so they could sack their land. It looks like they choose not to here. All right, they're still at two, though. They fire the looting, but then they concede. Too good. It wasn't even close. Gold in the game, too. We're gonna dump this stuff for this stuff, and with that, let's go to game two. Look at this hand. Could it be any better? I think not. Keep. They play a Monastery, and we shall start with the Monastery. Swing back, and then they Manamorphose. Manamorphose again. Monastery. But will they have looting? No. Just a Fork Bolt. Fix damage in here. Well, that raises the question of whether or not we should drop the rest in peace here because if they had phoenix they would have fired it there and so searing blaze might be the better choice here gosh i don't know they could even have finale of promise but there's only one card that costs one there yeah we'll just searing blaze them now and then send it back to them all by light up the stage phoenix and a braid in exile neither does much against us here's where things get grande if we play monastery the braid will hit it but if we wait another turn the braid will go away We're already down to six two cards in hand i think the smarter move here is just deflecting palm yes yeah, do that it'll be a bit iffy here lava spike i think we deflect that. The odds of them getting this up above three is not very high. So we'll just send the three back to them. So essentially it's a lightning helix. And they swing in for two, put us down to four. Light up the stage again. Fork bolt and flame slash. Oh boy. So monastery is kind of out. But the thing is, without a blocker here, it's going to fork bolt us. Put us down to two and then finish us off for two. So our only option here is to try and hit a helix draw. Searing blaze. Yeah, we'll go for it. There is still a very high chance of them winning here though. Okay, back to them. They manamorphose. They was looting. But no phoenix. We take two from fork bolt though. Down to two. And oh, Oh boy, a land. Let's draw here. And another land. Ooh. I think they have us either way. We could put out a blocker, but rest in peace seems a little bit safer. Don't get your hopes up, though. They manamorphose and a bolt. So we're going to game three. In game three, no change to cyborg, and this seems pretty solid. Especially this. So we'll keep. Starting with monastery. And how will they start? Soul Scar Mage. We shall then play things safe, play rest in peace, pumping monastery by one, swing for two. They take it like bombing and then back to them. Monastery and a soul scar. This will be tough. Very tough indeed. I think they're going to try and fire off next 
next turn. With three creatures out, I mean, probably. So we'll play things safe, keep the bolt in hand, and then we can either palm them or Boros charm them. The monster will beat the blocker. Okay, back to them. There you go, pay this looting. And do we try and kill that one now? Yeah, probably. Now I just have two more to deal with. And then a lava spike. They swing in. Do we block? Block can be really risky, so I say no blocks. Come on, more pumping, more pumping. And indeed, they lava dart. And now we send four back at them. Now I'll try and out aggro them. A lava spike, swing, and then Boros charm. I'll put them within lethal for next turn. We gotta survive. We hit a land. Flame slash on the monastery. That's fine. Bring us down the five, but here's lethal. Ba Boom. Thank you, magic gods, for blessing us with the deflecting palm. It makes me quite happy in palms. And may the magic gods bless us with more deflecting palms in our upcoming matches, because now on to the next ones. Opening hand, four lands and no deflecting palm mole. Okay, three lands, but two deflecting palm. We'll keep. Monastery going in. And ooh, a mountain. Please be aggressive. Let the deflecting palms queef back at you. All right, I don't seem to be doing anything, so suspend rift bolt. What is these? Ah, they're mono red prison. Okay, okay. Hit them for three. And now get spang. Fearing blaze. Swing for three. And what shall they do? Oh, uh, slag storm. Why didn't he attack first? Where was Charm and Monastery? We'll attack with Monastery in case they have Chalice. Swing for one. And they play a Pyromancer. And at this point, we're looking really good. I say we swing in. They chump, sure. And then Eidolon. They get a Karn. That's pretty good. Grabbing a Witchbane Orb. The next turn, they'll play it and we can't target them anymore. Okay, I suppose swing in. They chump. And then back to them. They cast it. So before it resolves, we shall hit them for four. They turn that into a creature. And how should we go about this? I say we swing with Monastery. Monastery. Yeah, they chump like that. Okay. Then we'll send the helix at Karn. That way it can't search next turn. And then back to them. What is these? They abraid the Eidolon. Interesting. And a snaring bridge. Turning that into a creature. But unless they have a simian, it looks like we got it. Because take this. And with two damage each, we'll swing at him. Can't block both. And there's the concede. So we're going to game two. Going into game two. I got some bad news. We're going to dump the Eidolons in the Fleckting Palm. Now the Eidolons are good against them. But as of late, Monterey Prison's been running Leyline of Combustion. So every time we target them or a permanent they control, we take two damage. And with Eidolon out, that ain't good for us. We're gonna dump this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, too many lands. So we're gonna mole. Mm, mole, it's bad. Okay, I like this. I knew it. What did I tell you? That's why we had to get rid of Eidolon. Swing for two. I hit a mountain, back to them. Oh, a chalice. Oh boy. We'll definitely use the smash on that. Oh, another chalice. Are you kidding me? And an anger of the gods. All right, let's smash this hoe. We take two. Oh boy, a land. All right, at least we have have lightning helix to keep his company. What do you know? Another chalice. And we'll throw this at them. And oh boy, a land. We'll draw. Critics, okay. And they play Karn. Then pass back. Wow. Well, a bit too many lands, and I bet they're gonna get the lattice next turn. Well, yeah. We'll plan on going to game three. Game three it is. Because we can't do anything here. Game three, no changes to sideboard. And this hand is it's okay. It's it's not great, but we're keeping it. Starting with the lava spike. And the fact they kept a seven land hand without combustion means they probably have a turn one chalice. Or not. Mm, maybe it turned to Blood Moon. We'll just keep these lands at the ready. That's what Ritual. I called it. That's why we got a Helix. And now on the off chance that they pull a Chalice, we shall Lava Spike and have the Lightning Bolt at the ready. What is these? Chalice on one. Boom! Look at this anticipation. I'm like a mind reader. Oh, God, I'm glad I can't play that. Suspend this. And back to them. Opponent plays Pyromancer with his big succulent nipples. And then Rift Bolt comes down. They go to five and Helix. Mm. All right, we'll have to settle for Steer the Critics. Hit him down to two. And then back to them. What shall they do? They hit us for four. And what do we get? A land? Hooray. Oh my god. Wait, what is he doing? Boy, you don't even know how the rules work. There are currently two targets, and as long as one remains, the spell still resolves. I bet our opponent's not even a mind reader like me. What is he doing playing magic? And look at that satisfying when they had the chalice, they had the blood moon, but we saw it coming. Amazing. And speaking of amazing, I have painted more deck boxes. They're available at decknut.com. But now, back to the gameplay. Opening hand. It's a pretty good hand, so we're gonna keep it. But he'll be she. Okay, all right. And then we shall start off with Goblin Guide. Swing for two, but if they are Titan deck, they usually have at least 26 lands in deck, and that's no bueno for Goblin Guide. It is Amulet Titan. And then back in our turn, let's go with the Steering Blaze. Swing for two, they're probably gonna hit a land here. No, that artifact thing. And then back to them. Uh, another token thing. And the Ancient Stirrings. Grabbing another amulet. This could end poorly, but let's go Goblin Guide. Swing for four. And a Trinket Mage on top. So far, we've gotten so lucky with that. No lands. And then my We'll suspend this. Office bike. And then back to them. Second amulet. Getting a nutload of mana. Titan comes out. And speaking of a nutload, we in for it because they most likely have lethal. Oh, we're just deflecting palm when we need it. So we're going to game two. Going into game two. We're going to dump all this for all this. And with that, let's go to game two. I mean, we have deflecting palm, but four 
lands Namal. And ooh, deflecting palm, but the land situation looks much better. We shall start with monastery, bundle them for one, and then back to them. Gem some of it, then they pass back. All right, another monastery. Swing. So far, so good. Then bolt, but then they pass. And then back on our turn, amulet, and then they pass back. Interesting, interesting. Swing for one. Then we'll play things at instant speed. Back to them. Growth chamber, so they could get life gain this turn. No, Azusa. And a trinket mage. I mean, amulet of vigor. What is these? Life gain? I don't think so. That's right. Get pregnant. But they certainly can make a lot of mana next turn. And ooh, deflecting palm. But if they give the titan double strike, we can use deflecting palm for first strike damage, and then another deflecting palm for regular damage. That sounds good. If we swing in the block like that, eh, we'll just pass back. Come on, titan, please. No life gain. Just the titan. Summoner's packed. Yes, the titan. Oh, yes. Go, big boy, go. Go, big boy, go. And Teleria West. Grabbing summoner's pack. That's lame. And they gain two more life. But if we can double deflecting palm, their life gain shouldn't matter. Sunday Canyon will play it. Make him think we have nothing. And now, please, just make him as big as possible. Summoner's pack. Getting another titan. Grabbing two more lands. And then Teleria West. And a pack negation. All right. Well, there goes one deflecting palm. They swing like that. And they grab field of the dead. I mean, sure, block like that. This is lame. But I guess deflecting palm. They counter. And then another deflecting palm. Setting six back at them. But they got a six. We got to hit some bolts here. But I got to say, they did play around the deflecting palms really well there. Because of so many land grabs, it could have been a lot more aggressive with the damage. Goblin guide, no. We'll draw. Another deflecting palm. Interesting. All right, just play the goblin guide. And pray that the palm works. They have to pay nine this turn for these two. But they have so much mana. And they go for the swing. Gaining two life with that. And then more lands. I get some zombie tokens. And we'll go for the deflecting palm. Deflecting the six back at them. Then no need to block. They're now at two. They play yet another land. Oh my gosh, this mega stop. Oh my gosh, and they're gaining two more life here. And play it again. And play it again. So there's the match. They go up to eight. My god. Lava spike and a land. Nope, that was that was crazy. They played around the deflecting palm so well, though. So I can't really be too mad. Oh my god. Dang, just too good. So now on to the next one. Opening hand. Too many lands. We're gonna mull. Yeah, this will do. This will do. And it might be a bit too early for deflecting palm. Yeah, so we'll bottom that as much as I love it. Starting with Goblin Guys, swing for two. And a Wayfinder, so it's the big hoe deck. Now I want Deflecting Palm back. They start with a Hedron Crab. And nice, a Searing Blaze. We'll Queef on that hoe. Swing for two. Big hoe on top. And they follow up with another Hedron Crab. Milling themselves for two. But nothing good there. Back on our turn, swing for two. They chump. And we'll try and lock things down with an Eidolon. They play Crypt Breaker and a Grave Crawler. Playing the big hoe. We're pretty close to lethal here, but we can't quite close it out just yet. But we'll spend the Rift Bolt. Play the Lava Spike. And in the face of greatness, our opponent concedes. Go one in the game two. We're gonna dump the Eidolons, a Skewer, and a Grim to put in all these. And with that, let's go to game two. And pray for Deflecting Palm. Man, no Deflecting Palm. But I suppose it will work. My opponent starts a Supplier. Do Nature's Claim. Oh, thank you. I love Deflecting Palm. Okay, let's walk into it. Swing for two. Why? They take it? Thought they would have chump blocked. Oh, unless they have the big hoe, and that's why they're keeping it. Go big hoe, go big hoe. But nothing? Interesting. Well, let's help them out here. Sacred Foundry and a Searing Blaze, killing that. You're welcome. Hit a looting graveyard. Swing for two. They chumped. No, they needed him for the big hoe. They go looting. You still pull this off, big boy. What? And there's the match. That's lame. I wanted to deflecting palm them. I mean, we're going to win no matter what. But we need that satisfaction of killing their sack creatures. That way they can't sack the hoe. And the hoe's going to swing in. We reflect it back. They can't sack it. It would have been so nice. But we have more opportunities in the next matches. So now on to the next one. Opening hand. One land hand. But we do have a goblin gun. Guys, so yeah, I'll keep on the hit of land. What is these? Probably were prison, which means we gotta watch out for chalice. Let's swing for two. Graft digger's cage on top, play this, and back to our opponent. They play the cage, and then a Narset, grabbing a chalice. Oh good, no land. Since they're probably gonna play the chalice next turn, we'll play a monastery, and then lava spike. Uh, I guess this one, because we don't want them hitting that bridge. And then swing for five. Oh, another Narset. Uh, they go a sorcerer's spyglass. Okay, which takes out the lava mancer. And speaking of taking out things, they play the chalice. Well, that's okay. Skewer the critics. Swing for five, putting them down to two. But then there's the concede. Going into game two. They don't seem to have creatures, so we're gonna dump this stuff and put in this stuff. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, I guess it works, so we'll keep. And we've got a turn one chalice. Okay. Back to them. Opal and they pass back. Another land. And we'll throw down the Eidolon. And back to them. What? They play chalice and zero to tap that. Uh-oh. War of invention. Grabbing spell sky. That's fine. And ooh. Let's see how they respond to this play smash the smithereens on the chalice will they redirect yeah all right but they're gonna lose five life here playing for two and suspend the rift bolt and they play ensnaring bridge that is 
is fine. Ah, oh, another land, final draw. Nah, yeah, we'll have to draw again. Back to them. Another war. Yeah, so they're probably gonna get the hexproof thing. Indeed. So they can't be targeted directly, but I guess just play another Eidolon. So now they can't play things that cost less than three. And now I just need to get our anti-artifact cards, smash to smithereens. We have one there, three more in deck. And what is this? They throw in the towel with the welding jar. That's game and the match. How long would it have taken? Uh, quite a while. So even in a match where deflecting palm was useless, we were still able to close things out quite easily. But now on to the next one. The opening hand, two lands and our curve looks really good. So we'll keep. See Chrome Cove, retract on top, so we're up against Paladin. Yeah, only we had out Eidolon, but they didn't get too far. Play this. And do we searing blaze that? Yeah. Where do we Eidolon? Ooh, actually let's Eidolon. Yeah, it locks them down pretty hard. They draw a land from the top and go down to 15. And then they play the Paladin, equipping that hoe and swings for three. Sure. I've got a plan in mind. They pass back. And for now, we'll hold this back as a chump blocker to spend the rifts and save the palm for next turn. Please don't play the repeal. Ah, it's repeal. He might have us here. Opal. Retract. With 20 damage, it looks like we're going to game two. Going into game two, we're gonna dump all this for all this. And unfortunately, the deflecting palm's gotta go. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, I suppose we can keep it. Starting with monastery. And then after this, we'll play defensively. Vision. And then they pass back to us and land. Swing for one. But then they pass back. All right, bolt them. And then back on our turn, another land, swing in. And back to them. Mm, they play that. They draw will attempt to kill it. Mission successful. And they pass back. And it looks like we have lethal. We shall swing in. And it's a little risky, but we'll smash. Just like with your mama. And then bolt. No spell pierce. No spell pierce. So we're going to game three. Opening hand is not bad, but we don't have anything turn one. And that could definitely be a problem. So we're going to mole. Yeah, a little bit better. We'll keep them the monastery. And ooh, nice. Idle on. But for now, we'll just pass back. They play SRAM. They draw a card, but too bad. Here you go. And back in our turn, we could play Eidolon. They could remand it, but it would definitely limit what they could do on their next turn. So Eidolon it is. Back to them. Pure Steel Paladin. And it looks like they're going for it. I mean, the life total is pretty high, so they might be able to pull it off. It looks like they're now just equipping it. And we pull Smash. But for now, we must pass back. What's these? They're swinging in. Sure, no blocks. And they pass back. So we'll smash one of these, taking out one of the shields. And back in our turn, Goblin Guide. Yeah, we'll see if they take the bait. Swing for two. They do. Interesting. And attempt the blaze. Yeah. Ooh. What they gonna do now? They have another one, but now they're down to one. And what a loser. Here's Lethal. Hooray. So we get that match. And now on to the next one. Opening hand. The curve looks pretty good, so we'll keep. Starting with Goblin Guide. Swing for two. They take two. And looks like there's a goblin on top. Yep, we're up against goblins. Well, I was planning on playing the Searing Blaze, but instead, we'll go with the Eidolon. They hit a land. And Eidolon it is. They play Mog War Marshal. And they use this to chump. So we even bother attacking. Mm, we'll play the Goblin Guide. Swing with the guys, but but no Eidolon. They trade, fine. Let's spend the bolt, and then back to them. Mm, they play that guy. I assume they're gonna kill the Eidolon. Yeah. And back on our turn, Rift Bolt comes down. Mm, another Rift Bolt. But we'll swing for two. Mountain off the top. Trades like that. And then we'll pass back. They play the Lieutenant, so they can gain life from that. Up to three, putting them back at nine. But we shall Boros Charm. I'm mm, gonna land. I suppose we force the Searing Blaze. They sack to go up to five. Down to two. Suspend this. And how will they worm their way out of this one? Apparently they can't, because there's a the concede. Going into game two. Since we're on the draw and they probably have Aether Vial, I'm gonna drop two Eidolons and a skewer to put in these three. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand, four lands, no. All right, fine, we'll keep. Although it will be tough without any creatures. Land, cool, back to them. Mog War Marshal, I'll just bolt them directly. And then back on our turn. Might as well Searing Blaze the token. And then back to them. And then they play that hoe. We have a few options here. Probably the best would be Searing Blood because they have no targets for that. Since we don't have any creatures for it to deal two damage to. So yeah, Searing Blood. Oh, but they deal two to that. I guess they really don't want to take the three damage. That is most interesting now. Grim Lava Mancer and back to them. Munitions Expert, yep. They still have three cards in hand. Ring Blaze with no land, so back to them. Oh, the Ringleader. Grabbing Goblin Chieftain and the Black Haste Dude. All right. I guess we'll risk it here and hit them directly, even though it's really risky. Helix. Oh, no. All right, we'll draw a card, and I guess we got a Steering Blaze that. We still have a nine life lead on them, although they do have six cards in hand. Black Haste Dude and the Red Haste Dude. They only swing for four, which means the rest of their hand must be pretty good. Lava spike. Uh, try and draw a card. Deflecting palm. Interesting. We'll risk it. Play that untap. Mogwar Marshal. Oh, and the lieutenant. Ah, that's not good. This thing can drain us for seven without even attacking. Darn. So we're going to game three. Game three, since we're on the play, I'm going to bring back in the Eidolons and dump one deflecting palm while keeping two of them and one rift bolt. And with that, let's go to game three. Opening hand. Noah's Fabuloso, but we'll keep it. Hitting them for one. Back to them. And no Aether Vial. Nice. And we shall go for the spanking Lava Spike. 
but then suspend Rift Bolt. Swing for two. Back to them. Warren Instigator, but no haste. And we will most definitely send that to Jesus with the Steering Blaze. Bottom. -um. And then might as well bolt. Hit them down to one. Good luck winning now. Mm, they pass back. Interesting, interesting swing for that one. They play the Munitions Expert, but guess what? Here's the Helix. They just couldn't handle our game three Mega Kui. So it's on to the next one. Opening hand, we got a Deflecting Palm and a Deflecting Palm, so we'll Deflecting Palm keep. They pass back. Fourth land, man. Suspend this. And back to them. And it looks like we're up against Jun. Take out that hoe. And then we shall pass back. The Inquisition. And we'll hit him with the Boros Charm. And they take our Helix. Back in our turn, Rift Bolt. A lot of spikes. Suspended. And back to them. Blood Braid Elf. Getting Hex Drinker. They swing for three. Rift Bolt comes down. We'll hit them directly. Other land. And it's back to them. Another Blood Braid with different art. Man. I wanted to use the Flecting Palm on this after it leveled up. Because this gets around protection from instance. So we'll preemptively use this on this. They hit us for five. We draw a card. Another land. Wowie. Oh my god. How wonderful. Deflecting palm. Okay. I am satisfied with that. Please just. Yes. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. You can do it. Go big boy. Go. Go big boy. Go. And now it's a four four. They probably think they're so clever. Protection from instance and all. But guess what? It doesn't target. So three to three. We just need one bolt. All right. So do they. Liliana. Just one bolt. That will do it. Yay. Deflecting palm saves the day. Going into game two. We're going to dump all this for all this. And with that, let's go to game two. Opening hand. One land hand. But we can do this. So we'll keep. And they pass back. All right. They probably have removal. Goblin guide. Yep. And then back to them. They pass back to us. Land. Hooray. Play a goblin guide. Swinging for two. Even though I'm sure they have removal. They draw a card. Yep. There's removal. Back to them. They use collective brutality. Take an instant or sorcery. And drain us. They take Boros charm. Sunbake canyon. We'll hold on to that. And for now, just play rest in peace. Back to them. Blood braid elf. Getting Liliana. That's pretty good. Forcing discard. And we're going to kill this. And once this goes, it's not like Tarmogreff's going to be a threat. So unfortunately, discard this. And let the top decking begin. Earring blaze. Back to them. They play a hex drinker. Leveling it up to four. So maybe deflecting palms should have been kept. But YOLO, like the kids say. They force discard. So we'll hit them for four. Hex drinker becomes a six, six. We'll draw. Skull crack. And oh, oh, that is nice. Although it looks like they still have us because they make us sack all of our stuff. Or half of it. We'll discard skull crack. They swing for six. Protection from everything, but not everything. Oh, I had deflecting palm, pick deflecting palm, not hex drinker. Well, that was very unfortunate. I mean, I think they still would have gotten us, but that was really derp de der. If we had Boros Charm on top, that means we would have won. No lightning helix. So I think they would have gotten it by one. All right. In game three, no change to sideboard. We'll try and make this work. Swing in, even though they have a nutload of lands in deck, but no land there. Liliana. They pass back. Swing for two. They draw a card and they fatal push. So back to them. They play Tarmogoyf. That is fine. And then... Yeah, I guess skull crack him. Back on our turn, bolt. Oh, hold back. Please make Tarmogoyf muy grande. Oh, yeah. I suppose discard bolt. And now Tarmogoyf can swing for four. So send four back at them. And don't click deflecting palm this time. Hooray, they take four. And then another three. And ooh, rest in peace. We'll lose the helix, though. Shoot. We'll lose the helix. But at least we're safe from Tarmogoyf. Three cards in hand. But ooh, they pass back. All right, play the land. Pass back to them. We discard nothing. And now let's draw a card. Deflecting palm. All right. I suppose we'll just pass back. And ooh. Ooh, interesting. Separating our permanents. Did we draw a card? Yeah, let's draw a card here. Another land. And we'll see what options they give us. I mean, we don't want to lose both of our lands, so we'll lose the rest in peace. Friend. And one card in their hand. Probably creature removal. All right, suspend Rift Bolt. Back to them. And collect a brutality. They drain us and try and take the palm. So we'll prevent the Tarmogoy from attacking this turn because we can't target the brutality since it's not dealing damage. They deal one to us and pass back. Three here. We could kill Ren, but we'll just deal three to them. And then Rift Bolt, I guess, suspend. And then back to them. We take one and a blood braid, but no targets for Maelstrom. We take six and come on, Boros Charm. Hit them. Ah, one away. And the worst part is if we kill the blood braid, it'll buff this up to a four and then they can kill us. I don't want to lose like this. Uh, I mean, maybe they'll accidentally fetch. Ah, uh, there. All right. I suppose it was a well fought battle, long and hard, just the way mama likes it. Hello, big boys. Daddy from the future here. It has been some time since I recorded those eight matches. And since then, I played an additional 
additional 18 matches with the deck. But now let's break down these numbers. In a total of 26 matches with the deck, there were 20 wins and six losses, bringing the win percentage to a whopping 77%. That is very, very high. So the question is, should Deflecting Palm be main deck? And like we saw, there were a lot of matches where Deflecting Palm was really, really good, but it wasn't always relevant. In the matchups where Deflecting Palm was relevant, it seemed really, really good, especially in the 18 practice matches that I didn't record. There was one match in particular against Dredge, and the deck ran the big hoe. In the third game, when I was about to lose to an attack, Deflecting Palm saved me. It tied the game, causing us to play a fourth game. And in that game, our opponent attempted to attack with a big hoe, and Deflecting Palm dealt that eight damage back to them instead. So in that match, Deflecting Palm was huge. But there were a couple matches where it just wasn't great at all, like Artifact Prison. But the way I see it, the card's like an insurance policy. If it's a favorable matchup for us, we're probably going to win, even if Deflecting Palm is sitting in our hand. And in really tough matchups, especially against the Aggro Mirror, Deflecting Palm just tilts things in our favor so much. And a big reason why the deck was able to win 20 out of the 26 matches was that Deflecting Palm was so good against aggro decks. Out of the six matches that the deck did lose to, only one of those decks was an aggro deck. It was a big Ho Graver deck that happened to steal the win game three, but all the other losses were to decks like Tron, Artifact Prison. So I'm convinced Deflecting Palm main deck is a must for this deck. I know not everyone's going to agree with that, but I really do feel until the metagame changes and we see less big creatures, I think every burn deck should have Deflecting Palm main deck. But that's just my opinion and that is all for now. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And as always, I hope you have a great day.